Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about Ross128, a red dwarf that's relatively close to our own solar system that seems to have created a new mystery for space scientists on Earth. A signal that might be extraterrestrial? Well, maybe not. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So the date is 2017, specifically May of 2017, and the place is Puerto Rico, where uh, a place by the name of Arecibo Observatory is located. It's actually a very large telescope built inside um, an abandoned uh, Puerto Rican sinkhole. And in May of 2017, the scientists were actually looking at several various red dwarfs, looking for exoplanets. Uh, specifically, they were looking at Gliese 436, Ross 128, Wolf 359, HD 95735, uh, BD 2002465. And while they were looking at those stars, they've taken a look at Ross 128 for about 10 minutes. And then usually, they discovered a repeated pattern, a pattern of signals they've never seen before. For about 10 minutes, uh, basically at 8.53 p.m., they kind of experienced what uh, they've never seen before. Signals that were um, in different frequencies, signals that were very repetitive, and signals that have never been seen from any planet, any satellite, or any kind of a solar flare before. And these signals came from a, an object that we're going to go to right now. So this is at a distance of just under 11 light years away from our solar system. And this is a red dwarf. It's only about 15% mass of the sun. It's a lot cooler as well. This temperature is about 3,300 degrees Kelvin. And it's an object that um, is also relatively simple in terms of um, what it actually has. We haven't discovered any exoplanets here, even though in Space Engine you can see there's 10 of them, but that's procedurally generated. So um, we know very little about this object. We know that it's a, it's a flare star, meaning that it actually does flare up quite a lot. If I were to accelerate time here, you might see some of the flares happening in real time. And flares here can be very powerful because it's a red dwarf. Uh, usually these objects, um, known as flare stars, can be very magnetically active, they can be very powerful, even though they don't actually produce as much luminosity as our sun. And as a matter of fact, the star is so dim that it's impossible to see it with naked eye from Earth. So we needed a telescope to discover it back in 1926. But as you can see in Space Agent, it does have quite a lot of things happening here. So this is what the scientists were looking for. They were looking for exoplanets. Now, while they were looking at the star, an unusual signal seems to have appeared. And this signal was basically one of three possible things. At least that's what they assumed. It was either a flare, it was maybe some kind of a satellite that passed overhead on Earth, basically orbiting around Earth, and was actually in the view of the star, and we actually accidentally thought it was coming from the star. Or maybe, just maybe, um, it was some kind of a other object that passed in front of the star, such as, for example, um, a comet um, or an asteroid in our own solar system, or maybe even an object in this solar system, like a planet right there. So this particular event really surprised the scientists, and they've recently confirmed that this actually did happen, and decided to take a look at Ross 128 again, uh, specifically... This week, when I'm filming this video, on July 17th, they're actually going to be taking a look at um, Ross-128 again and analyzing the data. So hopefully we'll discover if they see these signals again. Now, here's why it's actually probably not any of those three things that I just mentioned. So for our Type 2 solar flare, um, it actually has to have much lower frequencies. Usually the frequencies are not as high as they've observed. On the other hand, for this to be a satellite, uh, an Earth satellite that is, like an actual satellite that we launched into space, this has got to be some kind of a very unusual satellite because we've never seen 
uh, any bursts that we've encountered from this particular event. So the frequencies used and also um, the actual amount of frequencies was very unusual for an Earth satellite too. And on the other hand, uh, similar objects like asteroids or planets have never really sent anything similar uh, in terms of frequencies either. So we still don't really know what could have sent these signals. But just so you know, Aliens are not really an explanation just yet. As a matter of fact, this doesn't really seem like an intelligent signal either. It just seems like a very unusual, very mysterious signal that we've never seen before. Now, um, hopefully by late July, we'll know exactly what happened here and we'll know if these signals actually do repeat themselves. But um, and luckily for us, these signals are so dim that there's only one other telescope in the world that can possibly see them. And that's the FAST telescope in China, but unfortunately it's not ready for operation yet and it's being calibrated right now. So we won't be able to uh, detect these signals with anything else. But because these signals are so peculiar and we've never seen anything like it before, this is why we're actually going to be studying the star in a little bit more detail now. So interestingly, um, when these signals were detected, they seem to have come from far away. And we know this because there were several frequencies detected and usually lower frequencies traveling through space actually slow down a little bit because they encounter um, you know, things like dust on the way and so there's a bit of a dispersion going on. So lower frequencies often arrive slightly slower um, or slightly later than higher frequencies. And this is exactly what happened with the signal from ROS 128, which kind of suggests that it probably wasn't from our solar system, it probably was from this solar system. But what caused the signal, we don't really know. So, for all we know, this might have actually been a signal from one of these planets that is actually already generated in space engines. So there's actually quite a lot of planets here that we do have. None of them have life, but a lot of them have Earth-like structures and even Earth-like temperatures. So for example, the first planet here has a temperature of 68 degrees Celsius. It's a warm desert. The second planet has an even better temperature of about three degrees Celsius and uh, even has two moons orbiting around it and all of these planets might exist in real life and maybe this is where we got the signal from which also would suggest to us that we need to figure out why the signal came uh, from those planets in such a peculiar manner so maybe it was a planet that has several moons orbiting around it that actually generates such a signal like for example what we have right here very periodic moons orbiting around the planet that might have shifted the signal a little bit and caused it to be so unusual. And so hopefully by end of July of 2017 we'll know a little bit more about what happened here, but for now all we can do is basically speculate and maybe even hope for some alien signal from this nearby system that's only about 11 light years away from us. Now, since this is actually the 12th closest star to our solar system, and as you can see, this object even has, look at water on it. It's a hot Oceania with very hot temperatures of 300 degrees Celsius. Uh, so even though there there is uh, not a lot of distance between this star and our own Earth, it's still pretty far away. 11 light years away means that it will be a while before we have technology to to reach the solar system. So for, all, for now, we can just kind of explore and speculate using the space engine and actually hope for some terrestrial planet that we'll be able to find here one day and maybe even visit. And look at this very, very beautiful cold ice giant that we have in space engine. Very unusual coloration and very interesting um, southern lights right here. Not even in, in the polar region. This suggests that its axes of uh, its magnetic axes and axes of rotation are not in the same region. And then we have this beautiful comet right there as well, which seems to be a cold asteroid actually that's orbiting around the star and creating this beautiful tail, comet tail. Um, and this asteroid is only about 1.8 kilometers in diameter. So for all we know, maybe this is actually what caused this signal an asteroid that sort of spins with very predictable patterns and is emitting uh, different frequencies because they're being 
uh, created or reflected by a very active flare star Ross 128. Now, I'm not going to go to every planet because a lot of these are, once again, procedurally generated and are not actually real. Um, but you can definitely visit them yourself using Space Engine and check them out and maybe even find something unusual on them. And if you do find something cool, please post it in the comments below so we can take a look at them later together. Anyway, that's all I wanted to kind of tell you about in this video. And here is actually a planet with a very beautiful ring as well. A very unusual ring and very unusual color once again. Anyway, please subscribe if you still haven't and share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and wants to learn through video games. And hopefully later this month, we'll make another video um, with some kind of a more scientific explanation for what's happening on Ross 128 and if it's aliens, oh, they're probably not, very likely not. So don't go speculating that it's aliens because there's absolutely no proof that it is. The signal is just too uh, unusual to be anything created by intelligent life. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. We'll come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out. And as always, bye-bye. And let's escape this beautiful system, taking a look at it once again from a distance. And hopefully soon we'll discover what the system is hiding from us.